I want you to lift your voice like a trumpet and shout. Now, I want you to do some holy police for me. When we start shouting, look around you for the person whose voice is not being lifted. Bring them here for deliverance. Lift your voice. Yeah! Oh. Oh. Now, add, add some jump into it. Let's go. Yeah! the longest let's go yeah. come on give the Lord a hand in this house Great three, four, five people, tell them God is here with us tonight. One, two. And you may be please be seated. I'm going to have to take off my shoes at some point here because this place is for this, for this, for dancing. <laughs> Send for a pair of shoes for me. It's a bit slippery. I'm wearing rubber soles. Send for a pair of shoes. Ask Rick away to get me a pair of shoes. Any pair of shoes. No, they, they'll, they'll get mine for me. Yeah. So if I take off my shoes here now, Apostle, if I take off my shoes, if I take off my shoes here, they'll think you have influenced me. <laughs> I just want to stay gentle with you. Please sit down. You know, when you, you come into a house sometimes and um, it, it's like some houses, it's like you're entering a barracks. But some houses, it's like you're entering an armory. You know what they call an armory? Where they keep weapons. I feel like I'm in an armory tonight. <laughs> This is the kind of meeting I used to wear military uniform in those days. Every, I used to wear military uniform all the time. It was the only way I could convey what I was sensing that God told me to build him an army. There's nowhere the Bible says endure hardness as good policemen of Jesus Christ. There's a difference between police and army. Army is about maintaining the territorial integrity of the kingdom. And army talks about strength, about war, about battle, about extending territory, about fighting. Let me start by greeting everyone in this house. Let me start by saying... This is a fact-finding visit. This is a family visit. I just came to greet Mama Dina. And, and make up my mind, if I am well-received, I'll come back in May. So tonight, I need to be encouraged. So tonight, is, it's not about listening to hear what I have to say. It's about us working together in unison and harmony. It's about us creating a sound together. So please encourage me, encourage me. Mm -hmm. 
Father, we raise our hands to heaven tonight and we declare that you are Jehovah, that you are sitting upon your throne and that you are ruling and reigning in power, in majesty, in authority, in greatness, in grandeur, in dominion. Who can we liken unto you? There's no one like you. You are God in heaven above, God on the earth beneath, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Father, you sit upon your throne in majesty. And tonight we're asking that you render heavens, Jehovah, and that you come down uh, and that you do terrible things in righteousness, things we did not even look for, that we may know that Jehovah has visited his people once again. Be Jehovah Shammah in the midst of your people. Let it be known that Jehovah is ruling and reigning. Let it be known that in this house, Almighty God, that you are king and that the shout of a king is in this place. Father, we lift our voices and declare that you alone are God. Now lift your voice and declare. Now, now we are practicing. Now shout unto the Lord. Hey! Hey! Please be seated. It's, it's like I've come home tonight. So, uh, so maybe, maybe they seem to do to stay. Yes, let me let me stay on the floor. Please, could they move the lectern for me? So, Mama, I just want to greet you. I bring salutations from my wife. She said to extend her regards to you. And in the challenges of getting here, we had a gift for you. So as soon as I get back, but it was more important that we got here than that we carried the gifts. So we have a gift for you. As soon as we get back to Lagos, we'll send the gifts to you. And then I'll send man of God. It was actually for her, but I'll take the opportunity to send you something because you've been very kind to me. Thank you. So my wife said to greet you. My, my, my wife has a, she has a heart for the wives of pastors because over the years, I mean, we, we've gone through things together. We've battled together. And she's, my, she's the one who, she's my, my main intercessor. She stands behind me. She supports me in everything I do to the extent that my family will tell her, thank you for staying with our brother. We know he struggles. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, I'm so glad. My, my wife has been so wonderful. Like on this trip, when we're coming, she, some days my, there's just so much in my, my mind. She, she has to help me pack. So on this one, we're packing. And when they canceled the flight the first day, I was carrying a suitcase. She said, remove that one. You don't need it. It's, le less, it's one day reduced, so you don't need the canvas shoe. You don't need trainer. This is what you need. What are you wearing on this day? She said, she knows what the women go through. She knows the battles we face. And you know, th there is your private ministry to your husband. There is your role as a mother, apart from the visible role in the church that no one sees, no one understands the pains, the challenges. And so I want to honor you. I want to celebrate you. I want to say thank you. Not to talk of your ministry to the women or your visible role as the pastor's wife or your, your, your own peculiar grace and ministry. So, Mama, well done. We honor you. We celebrate you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord uphold you. May he grant you more grace in this season. May he extend mercy to you. May your steps and your strides be secure in him. May God settle all that concerns you. May He grant you the desires of your heart. May His blessings rest upon you. May it flow over your life, the blessings of God, even unto the utmost bounds of everlasting hills. Let the glory of God rest upon you. Let the presence of God surround you. I pray that God will be a glory in your midst. May God keep your family. May He preserve you. May He protect you. May He be a light all over your life. May your hands be strong as you strengthen the man of God. God says he, he has seen your tears. He's heard your cries. He's seen the sacrifice you, you, you make in the night seasons. And he is with you. 
He has to tell you he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that there is a special, it's like there's a special oil. He, he, play, he pours all over you. And there's something that comes forth from your heart that he loves. He says, do not stop what you do in those night seasons. He sees, he knows, he understands. And he has never for once left you. And at those times you thought it was you at work. It was actually him who was upholding you. It was him who was guiding you. Haven't you wondered, haven't you wondered why in the midst of the pressure you can go on and on, the Lord says to tell you, it's because his hand is upon you, guiding you, angels all around you. May God's peace be upon you, my sister. May God's, may God's love surround you. In Jesus' name. I don't need those shoes anymore. I'm, I'm wearing, my feet are short with the gospel so I don't need any other shoes I've got the sandals of peace on right now so I've got shoes of iron <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. I just no sit down sit down I just want to make sure the people around me are my friends <laughs> <laughs> so you guys please be, 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 be my bodyguards of God. It's a joy to be here. Can you hear me? It's a joy to be here. Just seeing, walking past that hospital, my, my heart leapt with joy. Such a kindred spirit that I, I, I connect with immediately. And um, <laughs> you're a fighter. <laughs> You're a fighter. You're a warrior. When they canceled the flight, I told them I'm coming. I said to my wife, don't worry, I'm going. I'll be there tomorrow. We sat at the airport. They said we can't travel. I said we're staying in this airport until we travel. I knew I had to be here. I knew I had to be here. I want to thank Honorable K.O., that's what we call him, Kamela Okara, Honorable K.O., Pastor K.O., for this great connection. K.O., you've been, you've been pushing this thing for, for a while, pushing this connection for a while. And um, let me share, tonight I, I just want to be free, is that okay? I, I don't have any order. I don't have any agenda. I just came to be free and to see if I'm going to come back in May. By the way, I'm received. <laughs> Put a conditionality there. <laughs> so let me just share a few thoughts with us on why I came. I've had some challenging experiences spiritually. And um, many years ago, I went to, I was in worry. I went, I went to worry for, to do, for something, to do something, to see someone. I was just early in ministry at the time. And I stayed in a hotel. I wouldn't, they didn't get a room for me, so they just found one hotel room. And I'd never experienced that thing before. It was like, the demons came into the room physically. If I wasn't a medical doctor, I'd be thinking, are you, you alright? I was just seeing eyes running around the room. It was when my bed moved physically. Ah, I said, there's a problem here. Just shifted. So I thought it must be maybe someone in the room, under the room above, and then the bed moved again. The warfare of that night. I 
didn't sleep that night. Battled. And then some years later, I was in Lusaka, Zambia for another event. And I was staying in a small room. Uh, we went on a missionary trip, very exciting trip. In fact, that was the trip I saw God work gifts through me. I remember the pastors, I came from Lagos. So they thought, oh, one, years ago, one pastor has come from Lagos. And they took me to, to pray for people. So we went to the home of this woman. And I saw her on the bed. She was breathing, <laughs> sweating. So my medical mind kicked in and says, this woman needs to be in a hospital. Well, the people who, I heard them whispering, like demoni or something, you know. Then they said, pastor, pray. My mind was, let me just say a quick prayer and let's call ambulance to carry this man to the hospital. I lifted my voice and said, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we stand the woman began to vomit on me. She just threw up. And that thing stopped. I said, this is like demono. She gave her testimony on Sunday. That thing shifted my medical mind. Then we went to pray for one lady. I remember her name, Lungowe. As I began to lay hands, she just brought out her tongue. I said, my God, what is going on in this city? Just doing her tongue at me like a snake, a human being. Then that night, I heard one woman, it's a long story, but let me cut it short. One woman, I heard her cry. We had prayed for one woman who was crying in the night. So she stopped crying. But that night she cried again. Somebody said to me, get up and pray. She said, I'm tired in the morning. Lord, I'm tired. You know I've been busy for you. It was as though, it was a small room. It was as though a hundred men entered that room at the same time. And each of them put their hand on me. I couldn't breathe. Struggle. From that 3 a.m. Labakuta Mabahale. Lepota. There's some things you can't explain in English. Malisa Pota Makudi. Shidele Mokutasa. Ebradi Salim Motoka. I said I have to survive tonight. Malika Tinja, if I let these people. Hey, Lamuta Makende Luti. In the morning, I said to our host, he said, he said, Pastor, did you sleep well? I said, no. He said, he came for you in the night. <laughs> How did you know? Nobody told me. He said, the witch doctors told him that they are coming for the pastor. Lendemo sika barita bahala. Lepota si tehili. Then, towards the end of last year, I was in Dubai. It's like, it's when I go out of town, I began to see that there's a pattern. When I go out of town, this Dubai one, okay, what's that whole area called? Like Oriental, principalities from around wherever they came from Singapore, Asia, Dubai it was like they came to visit to say you are not going back to Nigeria I was like in a, I can't even describe it it was like I was in a black hole the attack on my mind, the attack on my body normally I would call maybe a prayer warrior or my wife but I looked at the time, I said, no, the timing is, is different. This is, timing wouldn't work. Let me pray. I prayed. It was, when I think back, it was what may have happened to Jesus when Satan came against him 
and took him through temptations. The room was locked. I could hear this. I hadn't heard the sound of cars passing by, but I heard the sound of cars. Open the door to check. Is this door properly locked? It was locked. It was just that as though they were telling me, you can jump down. They're telling me, you're not going to come back. You're not going to go back to Nigeria. I prayed for an hour or so. I was getting tired and I just wasn't getting a breakthrough. And something said to me, Look for a message of Apostle Arome Osai. He had been mentioning him, you to me, but I just thought, yes, one day, one day. You know, I think I listened to one or two, but I, my mind has just been on so many other things. And so one of your messages came up. And I wanted to pray. So I listened to the message. There was one message where you said, fight as though your life depends on it. I said, this man is speaking. God is speaking to me through this man. So by the time you began to pray on that message, I then began to pray. I began to pray. And I fell asleep. I was using earphones so I could hear and, and pray in the night. When I woke up, maybe 20, 30 minutes later, the message was playing again. It had reached the end and was playing again. So I waited for where you prayed. And by the time I began to pray, ah, that's how the victory came. We had arranged to come in May. When I got back to Lagos, I called Honorable Keo. I said, find out when I can go. I'm going sooner than we planned. I will still go in May, but I'm coming. Give me a date. I need to connect with this man that God used his voice to link up with mine to deal with those demons that night. Do you know, in the morning, the peace that came was like, was it not this battle you were fighting last night? So that before I came here, we had somehow connected spiritually. So that was God orchestrating a connection in his own peculiar, unusual way. And when I needed a voice, to not just urge me, to come alongside me in prayer. It was your voice in tongues. I came to greet and to say thank you. But of course, that was God. So we came to establish a connection and we also came for another reason which was clear to me this morning after COVID I'm just sharing some personal things tonight in those days when before social media I would give even more details of some of the things I heard and saw. In any case, on this trip, I felt the Lord give me a word, a personal word. Just after COVID, God gave me a word to step out of the queue, step out of the queue and do the right thing. It's a long story, but it's about the queue of ministers who don't step down. They're like traditional rulers and they die on the throne. The Lord said, you step out and find Elisha. In fact, the Lord gave me a word, find Elisha, find Jehu, find Hazael, and work through Elisha, work through Jehu, work through 
Hazael. Hazael for the nation, Jehu for the church, and Elisha, the man around you. And the Lord continued to share this message with me about raising the next generation, about stepping into a new season like David where I would be by his grace. Remember the battle. They went to fight. David and his men went to fight. And the giant called Ishbibinob thought, let me take David out. David grew tired in that battle. One of his men, a man called Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, took on Ishbibinob and brought him down. They said to David, we, we want you, we want your role to be different in this season. We want you to be the light of Israel. We want you to bring direction. We want you to bring revelation. We want you to bring insight. We want you to bring understanding, bring guidance. So let's preserve you as the light of Israel. We would war. We would battle. We would fight. And there were these men, fighters. And one of them was a young man called Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of Shimei, David's, one of David's brothers. In fact, the giant he took on was the giant that had 24 fingers and toes. Can you imagine? And these were all the brothers of Goliath. So as powerful as David was, it was his nephew who took on a bigger giant than Goliath. God was saying, be the light so that a new generation can learn to fight giants. And so this morning as we landed, a voice said to me, this is your Bethlehem. The place from where your season three is birth. This is my third season. Season one, the work we did together. Season two, what we have seen in the past few years. Season three is what we're coming into. And this is the Bethlehem. On this wise was Jesus born. That's the honor we have of being here with you, man of God connect with you and to accept God's calling and my new assignment but this is the platform that has launched me into it thank you It's like I've entered a new season. There's one book, someone who wrote, it says, never eat alone. I don't want to eat alone tonight. Can you come into your new season with me tonight? No, I didn't hear. Just a few people said, yeah. I said, can you come into a new season tonight? Are you ready for something fresh tonight? If your hands to God. Vasile kila bonta halita. Le modobasi kele botush kelita. Se vadush kele baske vaduska. My prayer for you. You see, I, I'm, one of the things I'm so excited about this house, I mean, it's been such an amazing team. 
the gentleman who you drove us today, you're driving, you, who, who drove me today? With, who was with Pastor uh, Philip? Strong men, strong guys, just everywhere I go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, strong men. Strong men. The women in this church are men of God. But sometimes you, you have a very powerful church, a powerful leader, an apostle, strong. And people come in and they enjoy the anointing. So I began to listen to his messages, strong. I said to Honorable Keo, this is awesome. The things when Honorable Keo told me, I need to meet Apostle. He said, what you were teaching 30 years ago. He said, these are the things they're teaching. I said, really? Because that was my season one. My messages were different. Season two, I was fighting a different battle. And in season one, we didn't have social media. In fact, the wife of Honorable was in charge of tape ministry. I used to say, I preach at least a thousand messages every year. Because I'm, every Sunday I preach once. I preach Wednesday, then I preach at the weekend. So if you multiply 365 by 3, you get like a 1,000. But we didn't have social media. In fact, we have been looking for the tapes and the messages. He'll send me messages. Listen to what Apostle just preached. So the challenge, I was saying, is that sometimes you come to a place where Leadership is strong. People come in. People go out. And they themselves are not coming into the fullness. So what, I, what we did in those days was we gathered just leaders and we expanded the leaders group so I could teach those deeper things. I remember teaching on groaning. And it was just, we just would get breakthroughs for two, three months after the whole church has grown, you know. And I went to a church and began to explain the principles of groaning. And they stopped me. I said, that's heresy. And so I pulled back a little bit and said, I'll keep this thing within our own house. Because not everyone understands this thing we're doing. So I am pleasantly surprised to hear that those things we were teaching privately and secretly have actually gone mainstream. But my prayer is in every church, no matter how strong the house is, there will still be the people with the, for the bread and fish. Then there will be the 70 who can do warfare then there'll be the 12 who understand the meat of the word. And three, the things they understand we don't talk about. But then there must always be what we call a distillation. People moving from one level to the other. You must be moving. You must be moving. So tonight, this, my, my prayer is that you would come up higher. You, you would come up higher. There will be a transition. That your a season is like a new season. So when... I don't travel much and when God gets me to do these things, I know He has something. Even I am looking forward to what He's about to do. One of the things I believe is for an activation. For an activation. Oh, Nathaniel Albasi taught us a song years ago. I heard it from him for the first time. Touch, touch me with your hand. I want you to pray this prayer or sing this song. Touch me, touch me, touch me with your hand. Now sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit 
the prayer. Touch me with your hands. Jesus, touch me with your hands. Jesus, does anyone, anyone need the touch of God? It might be sickness, it might be ill health, it might be an intractable problem, it might be deliverance. See, sometimes when we get born again, some yokes are broken immediately, completely destroyed. Other times, your walk with God, sanctification breaks other yokes and then there are some intractable situations where God then arranges special times like this where the light shines in the midst of darkness and breaks those yokes it's going to happen tonight make it a prayer Jesus touch me with your hands Jesus touch me with your hands Jesus everyone let's go let's pray together touch me touch me with your hands Jesus touch me Touch me with your, with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Pray with me, Kalina Suta Bahala Keta. Hey, in the Luma Shatta, the inner Suanta, oh God, we want that to us. In the Kuasa, the Matia, I never cross the Hatelikan. Le ne ma sute, le kire bande, le kire busha, le 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 sina, le 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 busha. Satu halika. Hey, kisha ba. Are there any believers in this place tonight? Lift your voice, let's cry out to God. Kaduba shuka da ba. Hey, shalina na suta ba. Let's bring forth something tonight. He can Let's 
May the spirit of intercession come over you. Please, please be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated. Okay, let, can I take a few minutes to just talk about the dimension of prayer? Just a few minutes. In Ephesians 6, Paul, Paul spoke powerfully. He said, Finally, my, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, Wait, We're going to come back. We're going to come back. But you see, how you can tell as I travel the world and I come into a house or a church and what makes this so powerful is this is happening without a Sunday morning cultural gathering that's awesome that's just so powerful because most times it's on Sunday you hear that sound so they, I, I call them governing churches territorial churches I mean Flying into Makodi, there was just the peace. So I'm telling them, go talk to Osai, Arome Osai. And I'm not fighting you people, he's the one who invited me. So if you have any problems with me, talk to him. <laughs> but the peace in the atmosphere. See, the world has been judged. We, we, would, we would never. The world will never be reformed fully until Christ comes. But we will see pockets of kingdom expression of power and glory all over the world. And that's all God is looking for, where he can point to the enemy and say, can you see what's happening in marketing? I've won the battle. I've won the war. He never leaves himself without a witness. So we may never see the coalition of all these kingdom sports we can see these witnesses globally. And these places have the same sound. Their prayer is a roar. Their worship is a rumble. You can always hear the sound. But tonight I want us to roar together. I want us to move together. But if, if we started vigil earlier, I said this vigil is starting early. Normally we start our vigil by 11, 12. People are starting vigil by 6. Oh, it's not vigil. Ah, I thought it was vigil. I, I... It's not vigil you are here for. Let me start going home. I mean, I came for vigil. <laughs> Mama. They will start going, you know. It's not a vigil. Let me, tell, let me just preach and go, and let's go now, honorable. Okay, at least two hours. Can I do two hours? Some people call it mini vigil. <laughs> it's like small boy vigil. See, sometimes you're looking for, you're looking for a soldier. Don't find a soldier, but it's okay. Give, give me Mopo. Should we have Mopo here? Mopo is okay. 
then you don't see Mopo. No. In Lagos, what we'll be looking for will be Lasma. At least those people are they're brutal sometimes. Then you don't see Lasma. It's okay, give me Man of War. Then you don't see Man of War. Nobody to fight. Okay, I will manage Boy Scouts. It's the house of fighters. So Paul said, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He says, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So take on, the, curse your loins with truth. Take on the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith so you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Remember the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I like the NIV here, it says praying, NIV says praying. Please give me NIV there, praying with all kinds. Pray in the spirit on all occasions. With all kinds of prayers, all kinds. Pray with fasting, pray in the morning, pray with tongues, pray, pray in your understanding, pray at night, pray with just keep praying. Go back to New King James, please. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the church. Next verse, please. And look at what he said. Oh, he said, in view of all these battles that I'm fighting. Ephesus was tough. Paul built many churches, but the one in Ephesus was hard. That's where he taught his deepest lessons and lectures. He then said, I have a prayer request. He said, for me, please, pray for me. He said, but what I need is not even for me to be freed from the prison where I am. Don't even pray for my breakthrough. Don't even pray for the future. Don't even pray for my friends. He said, "Just I just need one thing from you guys. Please pray for me for our trance. He says that I may be able to open my mouth. In this case, to preach the gospel, but we can extend it and say, I can open my mouth and bring declarations bring proclamations. He said, pray for me for unction. Pray that I can pray. It's like, if a man is hungry, don't give him fish. Give him fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. He said, don't pray for a breakthrough for me. Pray that I will be able to kabali, that I can open my mouth because I recognize that the mouth is the center of spiritual activity. He said, pray for me for utterance because with the mouth I can preach. With the mouth I can pray. With the mouth I can prophesy. With the mouth I can proclaim. With the mouth I can bless. With the mouth I can curse. With the mouth I can go to war. He says, what I need is utterance. I have a friend. When you have a party, you have to invite him. He's always so joyous. And we're here today. Another friend of us, a lady, an American lady, calls when I saw her, her phone, her number. I said to Honorable, please pick up this call. This lady's going to keep me here till an hour. Full of joy. So you want those people around you when you're celebrating. They come in with an infectious spirit. The same way, there are these governing houses, there are these meetings oh, that are looking for people with trans. So if you can find them, ah. If you can find them. Have you been in a prayer before? You're praying. Kalima Sute And the people who are praying with you, they're around you talk for you. Ba 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 Then 
they have to be beating them. Kalima suits about her like it. Then they preach. So utterance is that ability. He says that I may make open my mouth to make known the mystery, not just preaching declarations, prayer, power. Next verse says, look at the next verse. He says, I'm an ambassador. It says that, that I, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. It's likewise the Spirit helps our infirmities. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit helps us with groanings. So what is, what is this utterance? There are dimensions of utterance. Number one is volume. The Bible says God utters his voice from the Lord roars from Zion, utters his voice from Jerusalem. When you pray, there needs to be volume. Except you are doing silent prayer or you're in a nunnery. In which case, prayer is silent. The Bible says the voice of the Lord is powerful. So sometimes when you come into a place for an interview, Psychologists teach you. Don't keep your head down. Please remind me of where I stopped. Please, I, I want to tell you just when I'm just in this, I'm forgetting. I'll be telling so many stories. I was going to talk about utterance and power and voice and volume, volume. This friend, my, we graduated together in med medical school in Nigeria. You know, in Nigeria, the medicine we studied ah, they suffered us. If a teacher walks in, you'll be afraid. We used to read 23 hours a day. When the lecturer walks in, we're all intimidated. So this friend of mine traveled to Newcastle and kept failing his postgraduate exams. So finally, he told us this testimony. He said he went to his lecturer and said, Why am I? People are always failing me. I've done my best. I know this thing. You know what they told him? He said that all your vivas, your oral interviews, you don't look at us. He said, you look down. They couldn't understand. They said, we, we don't understand how you communicate. And that communication is critical to your degree. You've got to communicate with your patients. But you're always looking down. He was doing it out of respect. You know what they told him to do? So the professor was very kind. He said, walk around the streets of Newcastle and greet people and talk about the weather. Get into the bus, say, hello, how are you doing? Nice weather today. Did you bring an umbrella? That's what he did for weeks. <laughs> he, he learned to have boldness and volume. They said to him, when you enter a room, own the room, own the space. Kapali kapato. So volume is a component of utterance. It's loud. Kapaleta bahuta. Mabarune matande here. Kadi. Kalebo supatende here. That's one. Then, not only do you need volume, you need language, you need spiritual linguistics. Apostle speaks, honorable, you are an apostle, English. Ha -ha. My wife, I, I told my wife, listen, let's, before you, let me listen to the man. She said his English is much. You speak, you speak, man of God, you speak. Ha -ha. Where did you learn this English? much are you using some words I haven't heard this since I was a small boy there's one he used he told me yesterday I can't remember the word he used just these things like enclave and you know things that nobody understands transactions what's the transaction with the spirit transaction is what they do in the market the man will say transaction conclave of the Levi's what's that 
speak normal English. See, my wife won't listen to you again with this thing you are saying, honestly. Volume, then language. See, sometimes you need to address. I was praying once for, for a lady who was having a very interesting, she was having a miscarriage. So I went to visit her, and I, sometimes I do the medical. So I said to the husband, listen, get me a drip. Let's set up a drip. I need this lady to have fluid. So I set up a drip. Give her, so she me a drip. I said, now let's do the spiritual. So we began to break a bakula ba se patina matali kapa tebando. And as we prayed, I just began to hear myself. What am I saying? What am I saying? I just saw a picture. The picture I saw was just so powerful. I saw a picture of a woman, because of my medical background, I saw the picture of a woman's um, uterus, her womb, and the parts. And I saw that they had used pins of his pins to pin her uterus to the wall. Ah! So I began to pray, as I'll pray, one pin will fall off. So I was just hearing language, Plate, Kalu, Britandu, Shiliki, Yabahai, Lepru. That's how the pins were coming out. So I realized, okay, oh, sometimes it's not just volume, oh. you need to address some things. And the Spirit gives you language inside your utterance to address those things. So now I have about five, this is me, I have about five or six different. I even have the one we call the phonetics tongues. That one is just for Ajabota. I'm going to Ajabota. Kelino suit. Pratali and Saprota. Oh, I'm fighting gentle demons. Keli Plato Meli Kalupa Hutaha. And I have the one I call vernacular tongues. Ekebo Gudamba. Abagushi. Ekebo Gundama. Unkenteshu Bogi. Ha. Hello, do. Ah, you said this fine man. I tell you, I go good and go to Hey, Shagba Gaga. Some will be praying. Should be do be do. Should be do be do. Should be. What kind of tongues is that? The, even the demons are laughing. Hey, hey, hey. We, never, we haven't heard this tongue since 1975. Kelly. What kind of tongues is that? They're gonna pray, pray now. Bros, do you pray in tongues? Do echo. You know the one called echo? Echo. Echo is we just echo each other. Who has microphone here? Who has microphone? Do echo for me. Who can do echo for me? Do it, bros, do echo for me. When I talk, you talk. Kalima Sita. Kalima Sita. Palutaba. Kalutaba. Telinda. Prakila Tu. Sadika. Prate. Move quickly. Manuta Mai. Abatuha. Hele. Kimima Sata. Sata. Ah, you're saying the same thing. Come on, give me some language. Kalima Tu. Sinta. Melita. Gamita. You're saying what I'm saying. Say your own. I'm preaching my, praying my tongues. See what I said was a video I came from. <laughs> but it's okay. I'll come back in May by the grace of God. So you need volume. You need language or linguistics. Then you need longevity. We need longevity. You need to be able to, so that it took us like over an hour to remove all those pins, and then the burden will just go. And the last one is one I like the best. You need velocity. Let me explain that. So there was a house where, when we were building the house, they dug a well, and then. They finished the building and they forgot about it, didn't cover up the well. So one four-year-old child fell inside the well. So we're looking for the boy. Fortunately, the nanny said he fell inside the well. They called, they called the fire services. They said there's nothing we can do. The 
Fortunately, they called one of the oil companies. So they came. The engineers came and said, this well is too narrow for a man to go in. We will dig another well and then put a man in there and then get to where the baby is, pull him out, and then that's what, that's what they were doing. You know, it's going to take some time. And then the mother, the parents invite you. Please, my son is inside this well. We're not hearing his voice again. Oil companies doing their best. There's nothing else we can do but what? But pray. How would you pray? See, many times the Bible talks about the burden of the Lord, the burden which Habakkuk did see. I hardly do prayer requests anymore. I do burdens and I do prayer projects. Some prayer is project to so it's one year. You just stay on it. Some is burden and you don't pray a burden, you discharge a burden. If you are invited to that house as the as intercessor, ah, ah. you now lift your hand and start saying, Father, I bless your name. <laughs> Glory to your name. We thank thee. You are good. Ah. The Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not how we should pray for like we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that words cannot alter. When you come to the place of groaning, there is no more linguistics. It is noises. So they call a few of us. Where are my friends I shook hands with? Four of you, come now, come. Kneel down here. Kneel down, kneel down. So you're my friend. We're in that house. We're in that house. We're in that house. Now, so that boy's voice is going down. What's, what's your name? Francis. Eh? What's your name? Daniel. William. Israel. What are we going to do? You can't even... You see, at that time, you need to have been prayed up. That's why sometimes before you pray, you should have prayed before you pray. Because the prayer you have prayed prepares you to pray. By that time, utterance has come. And at some points, it's not just volume that you need. Some things, times you need volume. Other times you need language. Other times you need longevity. But sometimes we need velocity. Let's join hands. Let's pray. He can let sign them up. He can let get 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 Deeper, deeper. We have strong men in this church. We're just doing demonstration. We're not praying for anything. <laughs> We're only demonstrating. We're going to sit down. We're going to sit down. We're going to sit down. You know I did this teaching? I want you to birth your next level of your destiny. All we want is you. God tonight. All we, we 
we want is you. Is you. Is you. Is you. You make it a hard cry. Oh, all, all I, I want, want is you, is you, is you. Is you. All, all I, I want, want is, is you. you. All I want is you. Lift your voice and. Oh, your voice and call unto him. All I want is your presence, your power, your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Anyone want more tonight? You 
You know, God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you as a prophet to the nation. I sent you to be in Malaysia, in Singapore, in South Africa. I sent you to traverse the world. Imagine Jeremiah, just a, a Sunday school teacher. Meanwhile, he was called as a prophet. So we get to heaven and we, we show us a video of what we were supposed to be. You're supposed to be a treasurer for the kingdom. You were supposed to bring the kingdom of God into a certain sphere. But you didn't know. Psalm 139 talks about it says, David said before I was born all the days of my life were written even Jesus said I only came to do as it is written in the volume of book concerning you what was written concerning you There's a relationship between revelation and time. We don't have time to waste time in terms of destiny. The critical tool for birth and destiny is prayer. God is like a, an engine, a railway train that needs to move and he needs tracks. Where there are no tracks and tracks are the prayer. Tonight I want to join you to birth as I enter a new season. I want you to come into a new season. Of course, this house has come into a new season, definitely. So what we see is what we used to call the Cornelius Connection. Peter praying, Cornelius giving arms, they come in together, release something to the Gentile world. Here, you have, I'm, I'm looking for a place for your prophecy. We'll find the time for it because that's your message. Just going with the flow. I want to spend five minutes in prayer, then we'll, we'll, we'll go to the Word. Oh, what I want to pray for is your utterance, your utterance, your language, your grace for velocity to come into different dimensions of prayer. your own personal prophet and intercessor. Let's join hands with someone. Just join hands. Let's just agree. Okay, let's just pray in the spirit. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Just for a minute or two. Pray for a fresh fire upon them. Pray for the power of God to come upon them. Now break those hands and now lift your hands to God. Pray with me, say, Father, tonight. I lift my hands upon your throne of grace. I place my hands upon your throne. Tell you. Lift your hands to God. And tell you, Lord, I pull myself into the covenant of your mercy. I pull myself into the covenant of your grace. Let the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. I call upon you tonight, O oh God. My life is in your hands. Tonight, Lord, I've come to cry out concerning the next season. I've come to enter, O oh God, a new phase of my destiny. To break every yoke that's hindering me. To destroy every plan of the enemy. I receive all trials. I receive a breakthrough. I receive revelation. I receive understanding. He said a little one 
shall be like a thousand and a small one a great nation. You said he that is least in this house shall be like David. And the whole house shall be like God. That's our prayer for this house. Make even a little one like a thousand. Make a small one like a great nation. We have seen your miracles in this house, but Lord, like Moses, we are asking for more. Hey, we are asking for more. Your son has waged battle and warfare. We are asking for angelic assistance. We are asking. Uh, Elle <laughs> Let's Tonight in the name of Jesus We're coming against crosses We're coming against crosses We're coming against divination we come against
Every negotiation from the pit of hell we're bringing down. Every machination of the evil one we're destroying. We're uprooting, throwing down, destroying. All that slander, all that accusation, all that character assassination. We bring a halt to it in the name of Jesus. There's healing. There's healing tonight. Tonight, you don't have to wait for me to call a case. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Can you imagine that someone touched Jesus and he did not even know. Jesus was asking who, who was it who got that breakthrough? Who got that deliverance? Who was it that the door opened? Because their faith was working. Does anyone have faith in this place? Let your prayer be your voice of faith tonight. Let your, declar your, your declaration be because you are a believer. Are there any believers? I want you to say, I am a believer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. This is a new season, a season of increase. I arise and I shine for my light has come. The glory of God is risen upon me. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. I receive my breakthrough. If there are any believers here, make some noise. Which one did you have? Volume, velocity, lang anyone have language? La Sina Makura Basanta Haila. Ledisa Bakura Salita Bakanta Lika Tushinda Hale. I prophesy to you tonight. Malika Sune Makura Bakite. Ladina Sika Bantolo Shin Barukata. You know. Come on, lift your voice and shout. Hey, I've got the victory. I've got the victory. There is a rising. There is a rising. There is a lifting. Your destiny. Your marriage. Your children, your family, pray for your family right now. Pray for your wife, pray for your husband, pray for your children. Let's pray. Pray for your career, pray for your future. Bring forth the plans of God concerning you. Come on, let's birth destiny. If you want to get on your knees, if you want to get on your knees, do it. Let's pray for family, for children, for wife, for husband, for cousins, for neighbors, for those Let's lay hold of the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom suffered violence and the violence take it by force. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shaliba Zileke Bakudaba. Oh, Sabada. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, you are the man. 
Congratulate five people. Congratulations. Tell them something is happening. Congratulations. Tell them, get, say something, get ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't do it. Don't say hallelujah. Don't say amen. Just say, I sense, speak to someone. I sense a breakthrough in your life. Congratulations. Change has come. The new gone, gone. Five people, one, two. Heaven came down and glory fills my soul. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wander in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior. Stay on the chorus. 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 Heaven came down, say. Heaven, Heaven came, came down, down and glory fills my soul. When I was gone, my Savior made me whole. That kick, the kick, the kick is a bit strong for me. Can they take the kick down for me, please? The kick, where's, where's the mixer? Take the kick down. It's, it's, it's reverberating quite a bit. Now, before you sit down, don't sit in the same place you were sitting before. Exchange your seat with someone. Do something different. Just exchange. Wait, hold on, hold on. People in, I didn't say come to the front. Just exchange with someone on your row. Don't come and ask. Just, just exchange. Just move. And do something different. Move. Just move around. Shake up your body. Shake up your body. Jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. He said, in, in those days in the village, when they're doing baby dedication, you know, some people will wear charm. They, they came with charm. So you know how the... The herbalist or the person doing the dedication will know. He said, everybody jump. And they are looking for where somebody making the, the jigida is making some noise there. Let's see you jump. Wait, 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 wait. Please, I need police. Go and see who's not jumping and bring them here. Let's see what they are. Come on, let's go. Give me some music. I need a rhythm, I need a rhythm! What? Give me music, give me music. No, 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 I don't want the American one. No, 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 I don't do that American thing. Give me some Nigerian good music, man. Give me some groove. It's spontaneous. Okay.
me now, encourage me by making some noise. Encourage me, encourage me. Please be seated.